Hey guys, this is Eric coming at you from Big E's Car Garage. Um, I thought I would give you guys a little review today on my Bortec V3 Supercharger. But before we jump into that, be sure and go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate that and I appreciate you guys tuning in to my channel. Um, so as you can see, we have behind me my 2003 Mustang GT. Uh, one of the biggest things that I did to the car was the addition of the Vortec V3 Supercharger. And we're just going to go over a little bit about it today. I'm going to tell you some of the things that I did preparing for the install and some of the things that I added to the car to support the install. So we'll go ahead and jump into this. Um, as you can guys can see now, got a pretty clean installation. They did a good job with the kit as far as fitment. Before we dive too far into this, I just want to tell you guys, um, I did start out with some additions as far as I put new plugs in. Uh, those are NGKs. I don't remember the exact number on that. I will list those in the description a bit later. Um, I did upgrade the fuel injectors to 60 pound injectors. Um, one of the things I did the same day, and this was just one of the things I thought would help performance and I wanted to add, that was a 78 millimeter BBK throttle body. Um, also, I did go ahead and in the back, um, we upgraded the fuel pump. And I thought it was a good idea just to go ahead and have a high performance within that to begin with, knowing that I was going to do this modification. Uh, so let's jump into a little bit about the supercharger. First thing I want to say, guys, is I'm extremely thankful for my brother. He spent a whole Saturday with me uh, doing this install. And I will tell you, I feel like personally you need two people to help you with this. Sometimes four hands are better than two, and that definitely proved to be the point in this case. So what we have here is a Vortec V3 supercharger. This is the non-intercooled version. Uh, one of the things I do plan on adding to this will be the Anderson power pipe. I think that's actually a four inch tube through and through. Um, also, going into this install, one of the things I did, it's hit over in the firewall. We did go with a SCT 90 millimeter mass airflow sensor. Also, the uh, air filters here down in the fender well as well. I knew I was going to need a larger uh, map sensor simply because I had watched a guy on YouTube that done one of these on his um, 01 Mustang and he had problems when he got to the dyno. He just wasn't able to get enough because he didn't have the right size mass airflow sensor. So I wanted to go ahead and start out with a 90 millimeter, one of the biggest you could get, so I didn't have that problem. Jumping a little bit into the installation, again, like I say, they did a good job on the kit. Um, I will say, guys, once again, four hands are better than two. When it comes to the sleeves on the intake pipes, and especially on this larger throttle body, that was a bit tough to get those sleeves and the clamps over the pipe. Those sleeves are pretty tight, as you can see. Getting it on the supercharger here wasn't too hard. But the one on the throttle body was extremely hard, and I definitely needed my brother's help on it, as well as the one on the front of the supercharger as well. Going back a little bit into the beginning of the installation, this mounting plate here, guys, this is where I'm talking about as far as when it comes to the instructions, I do think Vortec could have did a better job on that. Um, it left a lot to be... You know, you had to guess on it, and that is part of the fun as long as it's not too much guessing. But there were some things we just kind of had to figure out that weren't made clear in the instructions. Uh, one of the things is just lining up some of the mounting brackets, or the plate that is, onto the front timing cover of the engine. That took a lot of thought, and we just had to basically sit and stare at the engine to figure out and get an idea of how this was actually going to bolt up. We're going to move on around. So guys, I did use the stock pulley that came with the supercharger. Um, I think that'll be fine for my purposes. One thing I will say too, this is internally um, oiled. So oil goes in. They recommend you change that about every, I say 2,500 to 3,000 miles. Uh, if we look down close, if I can find it. You can kind of see down in there, I've got a braided hose, that's going to be my oil drain line. I've probably not even got a thousand miles on this supercharger yet, so it's not near time to change the oil. 
but I believe in keeping things fresh, so probably before too long. As many times as I've been to the track with the car, we will go ahead and get that replaced. Uh, one thing, too, I will note, guys, you can forget changing your belt from the top of the engine now. As you can see, you don't have much clearance. So my suggestion, and really the way we did this, uh, I went ahead and got the belt routed around all the pulleys. down to the water pump and what I did to make things simple is to jack the front of the car up and then I was able to get underneath this and I only had one more pulley to wrap the belt around so that made it pretty easy so I would take my pry bar take the tensioner and release the tension slip the belt over let go and it's done so I did find out I can get that done with one person if I ever need a belt change We're going to give you another look here from the back. Guys, going to a little bit of the specifications, I did see, and if I'm not mistaken, it does look like this Vortec V3 Supercharger. This is the non-intercooled version. It looks like it's only going to support around 22 pounds of boost. Um, when I took this into account as far as doing it, Right now my car makes 400 horsepower at 12 pounds of boost. So in the beginning when I took my car to HPP to have it tuned, Manny did the tuning and he did a great job on it. I took the car in and we were only at about, I'd say 329 horsepower. So needless to say I was pretty disappointed. He came out to me, he said, Eric, we got something holding you back. Your car is only making about two to three pounds of boost. And I said, you know, what's going on? Little did I know I forgot my car had underdrive pulleys on it. So I knew what I needed to do. I came back home. I got a stock water pump pulley and a stock crank pulley. Um, I had to go buy a short impact wrench so I could get in here and just get up under the car, break the nut loose. Um, I did put a, uh, a crank pulley puller on it took it off it wasn't too hard it's just tight quarters to get in without removing your radiator and I don't suggest you do that so once I did get that on I took it back to HPP he retuned it and then I was really impressed my car picked up a lot of boost it now makes 400 horsepower and I was pretty impressed with that um, I've heard several different things about that 400 horsepower mark is about as safe as you want to go Personally, I think I could do a little bit more. One of my ideas was adding a 50 shot of nitrous to it just to take it up a little bit, but that is yet to be determined. I really don't want to take the chance of blowing the motor in case the day comes and I get ready to build the motor or take this one out. I would like to be able to sell this one and sell it while it's running instead of blown. But again, we'll see. I do like to go fast, so that may be one of the options. Uh, getting back into the supercharger. One of the things I will note too as far as just a part of the installation that was a little bit scary, it does require you to bend your AC line and that is a soft pipe so you can use a pipe bender which I don't advise because it's hard to get into the area. So once I got ready to do that, needless to say I was pretty nervous and my brother stood back, he said in case of any accidents and I said that really doesn't make me feel too confident. But what I did before this pipe was on, I just went ahead and took my hand and slowly, very slowly might I add, continued to bend this. It's not quite at a 90, but what happens is it does give this enough clearance in order to clear this pipe. Because before we put this on, this is actually straight up. They say bend it at a 90, but I don't think you need to go that far. I think a 45 degree angle is fine. And as you can see, I don't think mine is touching. But I would say that was probably the most nerve-wracking part of the installation. Once I got that done, I felt a lot better about things. One other thing, guys, that I will say, too, um, that I did forget to add. When I went back the second time to have my car dynoed, um, he did come out and he said, hey, we have one more problem. I said, what's that? He said, your car is running out of fuel. And I was like, 
Yeah, am I going to have to come back again? Luckily for me, HPP had a fuel booster in stock. Probably took them maybe 45 minutes to install it. Got that all buttoned up, put the car back on the dyno, and that's when I hit the 400 horsepower mark. So, again, HPP and Garland with Manny Alvarez, those guys will take care of all your needs if you need a good race car tune. And also, you can check those guys out on Street Outlaws on Monday night. As far as everything else, guys, I don't have too much else to say on the supercharger other than I am happy with it. Uh, one of my ideas was if I ever decided to rebuild this motor or do another 4.62 liter build, I wanted to be able to use a lot of the stuff that I had on my engine already, namely the supercharger. But it looks like if I plan to make more than 22 pounds of boost, I'm probably going to have to come up with another idea. And one of my thoughts on that, I'm not for sure if the car in the future will be a nitrous car or maybe a single turbo. That's yet to be determined. Um, one thing that I will say as well, this pipe, you can kind of see how it's an anodized on it. Just be careful when you're installing it. It's real easy to scratch. A lot of this install, when we did it, I had on gloves. And I just took my time trying not to bang it on things. Uh, the fuel injectors, guys, you can see here again, like I said, I went with 60 pounds on this, which I thought was more than enough. So that's one thing that I won't have to upgrade in the future. The MSD coils were already on my car. They've been there. I've still got the stock fuel rails. As you can see guys too, this is part of the kit. You will have to cut your radiator holes. This is actually a, I won't say flex, but this actually spins. And really all we're doing is being able to spin that radiator hose to run up under the piping to come back up to your radiator and clear that. And the only thing you'll have to do here is just cut that in half, insert this piece, and attach your two clamps. And of course when you're installing this, you know, first thing I did was drain the oil out of the car and also drain the radiator fluid. Last thing going back together was just making sure I put fresh uh, antifreeze in and topped everything off. Alright guys, that's just a quick wrap up of the Vortec V3 Supercharger. Again, I decided not to go with the intercool model. Um, I talked to my tuner, he said... He really didn't recommend it, so I'm not going to spend the money on it. Um, I do think it is a good product, other than the instructions. The only thing I will do in the future to add to this to help the performance, maybe pick up about 7 to 8 horsepower, that's going to be to add the Anderson Power Pipe. Those run probably about $260, $270, easy upgrade. Once I have that on, I'll take it back to HPP and have that tuned again, and we'll see how much more boost I'm making and see if the horsepower number goes up. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. Once again, this is Eric at Big East Car Garage. Just a little overview on the Vortec S3 or V3, I'm sorry, Supercharger. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. And once again, before we go, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.